In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to move between different worksheets in order to select the cells on those sheets. I'll start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted. There's no code in this workbook yet, so I shan't need to enable content. And what we're looking at here is a workbook containing four separate worksheets, each of which contains some made up sales data for a chain of coffee shops called Wiseald Beverages, or WOB for short. So we've got a Paris shop and a London shop, a Milan shop and a shop in the exotic city of Hull. What I'm going to do first of all is write a subroutine which will change the title in cell B2. So this is a merged cell that sits across cells B to columns B to F in row two. So I'm going to change the contents of that cell to match the name of the worksheet. So to start with, let's head into the Visual Basic Editor and I can insert a new module into the project. And then I can create a new subroutine in here called the active sheet. And the name of that will become clear. The reason for the name of that will become clear in just a second. So the active sheet. Now, when you refer to a range object in VBA, Excel assumes that you're talking about a cell that's on the currently active sheet. So were I to say range B2.select, Excel will attempt to select cell B2 on whichever sheet is currently active. If we just opened up this workbook, it should be the Paris worksheet that's active. What I'd then like to do is modify the contents of that cell, or the value property of that cell by referring to the active cell property, refer to its value property, and then I'd make to, like to make this equal to the name of the active sheet. So just as there's an active cell property to return a reference to the range that's currently active, there's also an active sheet property, which you can see here in the IntelliSense. I want to revert to the name property of the active sheet. Sadly, the IntelliSense doesn't appear. The active sheet could be either a chart sheet or also a worksheet or even an old fashioned macro sheet. So because the active sheet could refer to different types of objects, the IntelliSense doesn't work. So I'm going to say active sheet dot name. I just happen to know from experience that that property exists. So if I were to run this subroutine in one of the variety of ways I can do that, I can then switch back into Excel and see that the value of cell B2 on whichever sheet was active when I ran the instruction has now changed. Now, if I want to select cell B2 on any of the other worksheets, I'll need to select that worksheet first. So let's start by writing some code that will select the London worksheet. And as we know its name, we can actually use that name to reference it. So switching back to the Visual Basic Editor, Let's create another subroutine called use sheet name. So I'll create a sub called use sheet name. I've just got some inconsistent capitalization there. So let me sort that out. Otherwise I won't sleep tonight. And then I can hit a, enter a couple of times and then indent the code one space. So to select another worksheet by name, I'm going to start by referring to the worksheets property. So the worksheet property returns a reference to all of the worksheets in the currently active workbook. What I'm then going to do is open up some round brackets and some double quotes. And in much the same way that I pass the name of the cell reference I'm interested in, I can pass in the name of the worksheet that I'm interested in. So in this case, the sheet name is London. I can then close the double quotes in the parentheses, enter a full stop and type in the select method. Having done that, I just need to repeat the same instructions I've previously carried out. So I need to select range B2 and then change the value of the active cell to be equal to the name of the active sheet. And the active sheet, of course, will be London at that point. So I could either write these instructions out again or cheat a little bit or not cheat, I suppose, copy and paste these two lines of code. Or if you are feeling up to it, you could even make a call to the active sheet subroutine rather than copying and pasting the same instructions multiple times. Having done that, anyway, I'm going to stick with this particular technique. I'm going to run this subroutine. And if I switch back to Excel, I should find that the London sheet has been selected. Cell B2 has been selected on that sheet and its name has also been changed. Rather than using the name of a worksheet in order to reference it, you can also refer to worksheets based on their position in the sheet tab order. So for instance, if I wanted to write a new subroutine to change the name or the value of cell B2 on the Milan worksheet, I know that Milan is currently in position one, two, three, counting from left to right in the order of sheets. So if I switch back to the Visual Basic Editor, I can create a new subroutine, which I'm gonna call use sheet number. And then I'm going to write an instruction that will select sheet three in the list. I'll begin by referring to the worksheets property again. 
and then in some parentheses, not using double quotes this time. I'm trying to refer to a number, not a name. So I'm going to write in the number three, close the round brackets, and then type in a full stop and apply the select method. Again, at that point, I need to select cell B2 and then change the value of the active cell to equal the name of the active sheet. So once again, I could call the active sheet subroutine, write out the instructions again, or as I'm going to do in this case, simply copy and paste the instructions into the use sheet number subroutine. It might be worthwhile just stepping through this one so we can see it working step by step. So I'll rearrange my screen so that I can see both Excel and the VB editor. And then clicking into the subroutine, I can press the F8 key to step through. As you'll see when I execute this instruction, it selects the third worksheet in the tab order, one, two, three, then select cell B2, and then changes the value of that cell to be equal to the name of the worksheet. The problem with the two techniques that we've used so far to reference a worksheet is that both the name of a sheet and its position can change. If you want a slightly more reliable way to reference a worksheet, you can provide it with a code name. Now all worksheets begin with a default code name, which you can actually see listed next to each sheet in the Object Explorer. So if I look at the Paris worksheet, I can see that its code name is actually sheet one. London is sheet two, Milan is sheet three, and Hull is sheet four. What I'm gonna do is provide a different code name for the Hull worksheet. So if I select the item in the Project Explorer, I can then look into the properties window to find the code name. Now, frustratingly, the code name property isn't actually listed as code name. What you need to do is look for the two different name properties that a worksheet object has. So you can see that the name property that sits further down the list matches the name that's listed on the worksheet tab. So here it's Hull. The property that's called name at the top of the list is the one that's referring to the code name. So what I'm gonna do here is modify the code name. I can select the, the text sheet four, and I'm gonna call this one Hull Sheet. The names of, or the, sorry, the code names of worksheets can't contain spaces. They're much like the names of subroutines. So make sure that you enter this without spaces, avoid punctuation characters, use underscores to represent spaces perhaps. When you're happy with the name, press enter, and you should find that that sheet has now been renamed in Project Explorer. And now we can use that code name in our subroutine. So let's create one more subroutine called use code name. So I'll create a new sub use code name. And then again, this time, rather than referencing the worksheets property and using the name or the index number, all I'm going to do is directly reference the whole sheet code name. If I press control and space, I'll even be able to find this in the IntelliSense. So there you can see it's popped up in the IntelliSense hull sheet. One of the big advantages of using a code name, as well as it, it being less likely to change, is that if I type in a full stop after the word whole sheet, I'll finally see the IntelliSense list so I can see the methods and properties that I can apply to a worksheet. I'll, as previously, I'll use the select method. And then following that, I just need to apply the same two techniques. So once again, I could call the active sheet subroutine, copy and paste, or write out the same instructions. So I'm just gonna copy and paste place those into the subroutine. And then if I run the subroutine one more time, I'll step through it again so we can see it happening. I can, he says, I'll do that again. So click into the subroutine and then use the F8 key to step through. So whole sheet dot select will select the whole worksheet, select cell B2, and then change the name of the, of the, change the value of the cell to equal the name of the active sheet. Now at this point, you could either move on to the extra practice session on this page, which will provide you with some more examples of selecting different worksheets. Alternatively, you can move to the next part of this lesson, which explains how to move between different open workbooks.